So I am back with another cyberpunk video and in episode 2 of Knowing the Basics we check out our character, the customization, upgrading and the story options we can select before being thrown into the world of Cyberpunk 2077. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you enjoyed the video hitting that like button really helps out and if you enjoy what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. Also people do check out the playlist linked within the video description for all you need to know on Cyberpunk 2077 with detailed guides on the very basic foundations which make this game. So the character customization and the availability of an upgrade in our character's skills are truly enormous. And while from the other videos I have seen, things can be a little overwhelming. Today we take a deep dive into it and I'll explain the options available, how it works, what can be done and so much more. But firstly, the character we play is known by the alias of V, this cannot be changed. We play the role of a mercenary outlaw within Night City. And getting into the game, we have three options of backstories or life paths. We can select from Nomad, Street Kid and Corporate. Nomad's description is Roaming the Badlands, looting scrapyards, raiding fuel depots and life on the road wasn't easy. But growing up in a Nomad clan has its perks, honesty integrity and love of freedom, qualities that few in the Night City possess and no amount of money can buy. We then have Street Kid, they say if you want to understand the streets you gotta live them, gangs, fixers, dolls, small time pushers, you were raised by them all. Down here the law of the jungle dictates the weak serve the strong, the only law in Night City you are yet to break. And lastly we have Corporate. Few leave the corporate world with their lives, fewer still with their souls intact. You've been there, you've bent the rules, exploited secrets and weaponized information. There's no such thing as fair game, only winners and losers. Now either of these three options sees you before being let loose in Night City, playing around 30 minutes of gameplay. Now all three options will see you enter Night City at the same point as the same character. These are just the origin story or life path of that character you will be playing and depending on the life path you pick, Nomad, Street Kid or Corporate, things will obviously differ, influencing dialogue options and allowing you to interact with different factions in different ways. For instance, picking Street Kid will give you more options talking to the lower level gangs. Picking Corporate will see you obviously being able to swing things easier higher up that food chain in certain instances. Ok so on to the first stages of character customization, and we'll start with an overall appearance. Now the options here are truly staggering, now they're probably ain't the most in depth you've ever seen but they're definitely up there for sure. So it starts with you being able to pick either male or female. We then edit our background where we can I believe add our names and various other things like prior convictions, education and more details. We choose from a section of childhood heroes, key life events and why we chose Night City. We then under the biometric scan tab we can customise skin type, hairstyle, eyes, eyebrows, mouth, jaws, ears, 8 bits of cyberware which we will get to into a second, I mean there's a massive massive catalogue of cyberware which is just another level of customization, which will truly affect the way you play the game. We also have scars, tattoos, piercings, teeth, eye makeup, lip makeup, blemishes, nipples, tattoos, body scars, penis types, vagina options, pubic hair and even more. And yes guys, you can change the size of your PP, you can change the size of your nipples, you can do so much, it's unbelievable. And then under the tab of appearance, where we're able to change the colour of our hair, head, eyebrows, beards and pubic hair. The game also features sliders that can be used like I said to increase breast size, penis size and buttocks so you can give yourself a giant dung along if you want to, that's up to you. Now it's said that choosing between voices determines the gender the player character is and the genitalia also determines what characters can be romanced and yes romance is a thing within this game but we'll get into that in a different video. So after you are done here with the appearance of our character it's then on to the bio stats which is where we will spend points where we have 5 stats which are our main attributes. We have body, intelligence, reflexes, technical and cool. And beyond these there's a massive skill tree 
which we can earn and spend points into. These five attributes are the five main points of that skill tree, and the skill tree consists of many, many other stats, which we can build into as you'd expect from an RPG. And as you can see by the skill tree on screen now, we can see those five stats, but there are tons of trees which build off these. For instance, Cool is represented by Assassination, Nerve and Snipers. Technical has Engineering. Body we have Melee, Athletic, Shotguns and Two-Handed. Intelligence we have Hacking. Reflexes we have Blades, Rifles and Handguns. These all can be built into in various different ways. We can see we can earn more Attribute Points also, so we can put further more into the original 5 Attributes we built into. Perk points here are obviously spent on the perks unlocked with the attributes of reflexes, cool, technical and so on. Now these individual perks can also be leveled up. For instance using rifles gives you rifle experience because as you can see within the skill tree there are XP bars under said skills. I guess here by looking at this we see rifles has a max level of 4 here represented by reflexes being at a level 4. This can go up even further like we can see the other attributes and perks combined. So leveling up our character, we can gain points to spend, it's that simple. But we also have street credit too. Levels here unlock new vendors around Night City, as well as I believe granting us perk points and unlocking further side missions. Now clothing within this game and the multitude of sources and themes behind this system is crazy massive. And with clothes come even more benefits to our character or build. With clothes offering things like resistance to certain in-game groups of what I'd call elements like thermal, EMP, chemical and physical resistance. These we see commonly on jackets where we also see a boost in street cred XP. So that's pretty cool to know. But the customization doesn't end their people. The world of Cyberpunk 2077 is certain to be rich and vivid in its dystopian vision of a future entrenched in corruption and technological marvels. And these marvels include cyberware technology, which compromises much of Cyberpunk 2077's aesthetics and storytelling. And like I said earlier on when we were talking about appearance and character customization, cyberware in Cyberpunk 2077 is absolutely massive and plays a massive role within this game. So cyberware in this game can be organised into a number of different categories. Generally in short, cyberware is defined by any cybernetic technology that is inserted onto or into the human body to serve a particular purpose. These are different from Cyberpunk 77's Bioware, which are biological enhancements, which we will talk about in a second, but more onto the cyberware. So cyberware enhancements vary in different rarities going up to legendary. There are many, many options here, so let's check them out. Now for every option of cyberware you can implant or put onto your body within this game, there are many, many subcategories to that, which we won't get completely into, but you'll see the available options on screen if you do want to pause it and read them. So we're going to start with implants. So implants are the useful little things that you get plugged in to make living easier or that you may want for a specific job like motion detectors, radiation detectors and chemical analyzers and many many more which you can see on screen now like I said. There's so much depth here people to this one category alone it's unbelievable. We then have neural wear. So this class of cyberware possessors are critical for linking cybernetics to the general nervous system. One of the most important aspects of cybertech is invisible to the naked eye. This type of enhancement is known as neuralware and it's usually in the form of tiny co-processing chips and nerve amplifiers that increase existing abilities. The basic neural processor is a switch box implanted into the lower spine and this is used to route signals from external cyberware to the central nervous system. It is the main system for any type of neural interface including reflex boosters, interface plugs, weapon, data term and vehicle links, mini computers and sensory augmentations. The neural processor has a small inspection space which allows secondary co-processors to be inserted into the basic processor module. This makes for even more upgrading people 
So core processors are specialized add-ons, which can be plugged into the main neural processor at any time, like I said. Now some light reflex boosters allow you to improve your reactions and perceptive abilities to inhuman levels. Others like link core processors allow you to interface with computers, databases, vehicles and other machines. Once you have that basic neural processor, you can jack into as many options as you like. So pretty cool. We then have cyber limbs. These are things that can be done to oneself to improve strength, damage capacity and flexibility. In addition to these improvements, artificial shoulders can be mounted at waist level to provide extra arms. A cyber limb can hold up to four options or built-ins. A hand or foot is considered to be one option. Cyber limbs automatically come with foot modules. Some examples of cyber limbs you can read up on on screen now. There are just way too many options to stay here people. But if you do want to pause the video and check them out you can. We then have cyber weapons. So cyber weapons are at the top of the black cyberware hit. Hidden killing tools that can be buried within your skin until that moment you want to take someone out. Cyber weapons are normally not available on the open market. The only exceptions are scratchers and vampires, and locating them usually involves going down into the local combat zone, finding a fixer and paying a lot of you or two ugly, nasty, violent people who would normally consider you spare parts. We have fashion wear. So fashion wear is a class of cyberware focused on physical aesthetics. And fashion wear is a low impact cyberware designed for casual convenience or merely for looks. Fashion wear is generally innocuous, easy to install and carries a low or negligible humanity cost relative to real cyberware. Most mall stores and retail outlets that install commercial cyberware will have options for fashion wear as well. There are even standalone kiosks that can install it. Again, you can see the many different available options on screen now. And then we have cyber optics. These cyber optics are a combination of a digital processor and camera. Cyber optics are replacements for the normal eye. Cyber vision is just like regular vision, only better. Colors are brighter, images sharper, and that's just the start. We then have body plating. So body plating covers any situation where armed plastics and metals are layered and directly anchored to the skin. The arm is microscopically porous, allowing the skin underneath to breathe and made by sandwiching an ablative plastic shell with energy absorbing microcellular honeycomb. Body plating doesn't though make you any stronger or faster, but it's perfect for the cyborg who wants all over protection all the time. And it doesn't care who it knows, it is the ultimate expression of the metal is better than meat philosophy. The body plated look more like robots than do humans, and are impervious to most of the physical damage that beats us mere mortals. Body plating also includes specialized mounts for sensors as well as body armor. And then we have cyber audio. And while these systems patch into the auditory nerves and speech centers of the brain, this enhancement affects both ears and also includes a sub-vocalizing mic on the mastroid bone. There is also no visible change to the outer ear, although some cyberpunks replace the outer ear with a set of mechanical speaker pickups for max effect. And <laughs> well people, that's it for just the cyberware, and like I said it's absolutely massive. Now I'd be lying if I told you there wasn't more here with cyberware, because the depth is unreal. And with the cyberware being so popular within the world of cyberpunk and the city of Night City, so far is the demand for places in which cyberware can be installed, and that's where Ripper Ducks come in. Ripper Ducks are the doctors you can visit in Cyberpunk 2077, installing all sorts of cybernetic prosthesis. There are many that operate legally, but some conduct illicit deals, such as installing military grade cybernetics for the right price. And well, if you want cyberware, Ripper Ducks and the many of them will have to be visited. And it won't be free, they cost you that in game currency. But yeah guys, the end of this video is near. I believe I've covered the mass majority of which you can customise and upgrade your character. And well, like I said at the start, the depth of this game is unreal. And this shows it. Now if you guys did enjoy the video, leaving a like truly helps me out for sure. I mean, I'm kinda new to cyberpunk when it comes to creating content, but I don't plan on stopping. So if you like the depth I go to and want to see more, make sure you subscribe. But yeah guys, this has been basically an overview of the character customization we will get come November with Cyberpunk 2077. And on that note, the end of the video has arrived. Again, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. And remember and turn notifications on if you liked what you see and want to see more. 
Well guys, thanks as always for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I will see you on that next one.